Hello and good afternoon or morning, depending on where you are. Today I wanted to talk about um, compensation and I wanted to show you how you compensate in Flojo. This is following up on our discussions of last week where we just talked about the three rules of compensation. What I have done is I've uploaded a data set that I use. And if you want this data set, email us at support at expertcytometry.com and ask for the data set and I can send you a link to it. I like using this data set because as you'll see, we use both beads and cells for compensation. It's a five-color experiment for fluorochromes and DAPI as a viability dye. Now, if I were to run this um, on in Diva, I could compensate on on my instrument if I wanted to. But I like to compensate on the instrument because I have or on the in, in my third-party software like Flojo or FCS Express because I feel I have more control there. Both packages, and in fact, all the major compensation. Uh, third-party analysis packages have some sort of compensation wizard. Now in Flojo here, you can see that it's created a group called compensation and it attempts to automatically put in tubes that have comp or compensation in their name into this file. And you see it's basically grabbed our unstained beads and unstained cells. I don't want these in here, so I'm just gonna get rid of them by deleting. Now I'm going to go to the, my beads and you can see here I have uh, four be you know, the four beads, and then my cells, I have four se five cells because I have the DAPI. Now, if I'm going to properly compensate, I need to bring my DAPI in here. So this gets back to the point that we talked about, the idea about not using a universal negative. Because if I use a universal negative for this, am I going to use beads or cells? It's important to have both a positive and a negative in your, each of your sample. And so what I'm going to show you here, if I go back to my beads, I'm going to take... Uh, CD45 Fitzy, I'm going to put that on my compensation, and I'll take um, CD3 PE Sci555 and put that on my compensation. And I'll take from the cells the APC and the PE. Where is the PE? Here we go. So now let's look at this matrix here. So now we have five colors, Fitzy, PE, Sci5.5 PE, APC, and DAPI. Now I can go and automatically use the wizard here. The wizard is now gonna automatically attempt to identify my target carrier and then identify a positive and negative. And let's show you what that looks like. When I click on this button here, you'll see it's calculating the compensation matrix. And here it shows us the matrix. So let's draw this down here. Now you'll notice in uh, Flojo, we have uh, a, what's a green, yellow, red here. You can see these two buttons, there are issues. So we're gonna definitely take a look at that. It's gonna tell us what it thinks each of the parameters is measuring, what the compensation is, and then we're gonna see our positive and negative. I'm just gonna open this up a little bit so you can see more. So we can now scroll down, and here we have our first population, our C, uh, Sci-5.5 PE. We were able to, the software is able to nicely gate the positive population, our uh, target cells in this case target beads, and identify a positive and negative sample. Now, if we come down here to our next one, this is our PE. This was on cells, remember, look at the gate that this is drawn. So this gate is probably not the right gate to use, obviously, because we're pulling in some schmutz here, we're pulling in this here, pulling in some stuff here. So we double click on this population, it lets us see the population, and now we can readjust the gate. Oh, cancel. So I'm going to readjust the gate. And remember, when we're gating, we want to gate relatively tightly around our population because we want similar autofluorescences. OK, so here's my population. If I double click through this, and we set this up as a histogram, you'll see we can now come in here and just the positive. And then we can put a second population on here. And we can call this our negatives. And I'm going to close out of here and here. And so now up here, I have to come, and I'm on the top again, under the negative window, and I'm going to have to indicate what the negative is. And so actually is going to this is interesting that it's not working right today uh, this is the newest version of 
uh, Flojo, so I'm a little bit perplexed. You'll see when I double clicked over here, it opened up the window and now with the histogram, it gave me the positive and negative. Let's just try and delete this and we'll try again to see if it, it prefers. So again, if we come up here, it should be, it is not, uh, for whatever reason, there we go. Now it's finally done. I'm not sure why it took three times, but third time's a charm. So now you'll see it's labeled properly. We have our positive negative. Our red has gone to yellow. Now basically the yellow is just saying, is this the right sample? Yes, it's the right sample. We're pretty confident on that. So let's go down to our next one, our fluorescein. Our, again, nice beads, looks really good. Our red channel. So again, it pulled all that together. We don't really like that and it has identified a positive or negative. So let's go back in here. And again, let's readjust our gate. And this is one of the downsides of using um, wizards is you really have to come in and check everything. Make sure the software algorithms have found the right populations that you're looking for. You'll notice that this one, in this gate, it's got this little real far tail. So we just bring that in and Bring it back. We're going to close that up now. So again, we've got our positive and negative. We're pretty good. So now if we come down to our DAPI, it's grabbed this really funky one. Now, here's a trick I like to do is I'm going to go back over to our main window. Here's our population. I am going to just look at DAPI versus forward scatter. And so now I can actually call grab these. And I'm going to call these DAPI, positive, DAPI negatives. And I'm going to call these up here Depi positive. Now you'll notice in this case, these cells are really close to the axis. The, the Depi is very bright. And we have some stuff in here that we could use a FMO control to, or unstain control to help eliminate, figure out where we should probably set the true gate on our sample. But remember, we're going to be eliminating our Depi positive cells. Those are dead cells. So if there's a little bit, if the compensation is 100% perfect, um, because this is at the far edge of our detector, we'll be okay. Um, so here we go. We're going to put our DAPI, uh, DAPI negative, DAPI positive. So now you can see we've got a green light for everything. Um, now we're going to view the matrix. So when I view the matrix, it's going to calculate the matrix and it's going to show us here so we can see what our matrix is you can see here there's definitely a problem somewhere so we're going to have to go take a look at that the cd45 ra uh spilling over 400 percent there's clearly a problem so we're going to have to go take a look at that population again so that is this population here so let's take a look at this go back here and we're saying it's in the P's. So we we do have a what we, I would expect say is a normal amount of uh, detection in there. I'm just not sure where the problem is coming from. So this is a good case why we would you know if we go back and we're going to change this, we're going to come in here and we're going to grab our Beat control. And I'll be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever seen this error with the data set, so I'm not quite sure what the problem is. So I'm going to put this in here to our compensation. I'm going to change this to 45 beads. We're going to now view our matrix. You'll notice now it's changed color. This is a new matrix. I'm going to view this matrix. There we go. That's what we'd expect. It's always good to know kind of the ranges that you want. So we can see this is much more reasonable, what we'd expect to see. Down here, we're seeing our unlaid our over, overlay. So we can change whatever sample we want to look at. Here's our multicolor sample. And um, we can compare all by one color, the end by end view, which we have here. And we've, if we remove this, you can see the black is compensated. 
the blues are uncompensated. This is a matrix we can now apply to anything we, any of our uh, groups over here. We can actually save the matrix we want. The other thing we can do here is calculate the SSM or the spectral spillover matrix. And this is a very useful tool to understand the error that each of the detectors receives and the error that each fluorochrome contributes um, so that you can help better, one, design panels because you know what's more sensitive and what's less sensitive, and two, you can use this for tracking. So if I click on this, I'm going to hit display SSM, and you're going to see here the spectral spillover matrix, and you can see we can sum across in both directions how much, in this case, how much error a given fluorochrome, uh, given detector is receiving, and in this case, how much a given fluorochrome is contributing to the whole panel. And you can identify areas where there's significant issues. And in this case, this is only a four color panel, so we don't have a lot of issues. In an upcoming web video, we'll be actually showing you how to use this uh, in conjugation with the new BD CD4 um, multi panel set, which allows you to uh, provide 24 different fluorochromes labeled to um, CD4. Uh, they both have a human and a mouse panel. And this is useful because you can do this calculating the staining index, and you can also use this to calculate the SSM. So with that, the SSM and the compensation matrices can be saved. Um, if you use the SSM, you could also use it as a tracking tool to help understand, uh, the comp understand how things are going uh, over time, how your system's behaving, how the instrument's behaving, um, but also very useful for knowing where and what instrument you might want to use for... Uh, designing your experiment, and that's where that 24 um, color kit comes into play, and we'll talk about that as, uh, in the very near future. So with that, I want to say thank you, have a great day, and we'll talk soon.